Um, all right. So we are um, recording this. It will be available. Oh, Tammy, you're so sweet. Uh, we will. It always will be available um, on uh, replay. I actually will be sending the replay out um, tonight uh, via email. So if you registered, you will be able to. Um, you'll, I'll be sending that out automatically to you. So you, everybody will get that. Um, so I would really, hi Jennifer, I would really love to get started. I really want to make sure that we're really timely and that we get all, everybody gets all the information that they need. So if you have a piece of paper and something to write with, you want to make sure you have it out. I think that the things that I'm going to be talking about are going to be very, very different than what you might expect. So this is a three day, uh, three day masterclass. Um, I'm calling it, it's weight loss done right. So we have three different topics um, and three different things that I think are essential for weight loss to happen, for weight loss to happen in a sane and sustainable way. Something that you're gonna be able to do, um, that you can do to lose weight and then you can lose weight and keep it off. That is probably the biggest thing that I see um, in my business is people, I think everybody, probably everybody on this call, anybody who's listening to my voice can probably say, yes, I'm a professional dieter and I've done it all my life and I've still got the same things going on because the same process is happening over and over again. And so we can keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, or we can decide, you know what? This is crazy. We need to start doing something that's different. We need to start doing something that's actually going to make an impact. And that's what we're going to talk about over these next three days. So today's topic, this, this first topic. So what I want to let you know is what our goal is for today. So my goal for today's presentation is for you to understand how your brain impacts every decision that you make, including what you eat, and how you can be in, more in control of your brain and how that impacts what you eat. And that there, therein lies what impacts your weight. Um, I'm gonna also explain how, why your thoughts are hands down the key to losing weight and keeping it off. Also, how your feelings and your responses to those, to those feelings that you have, your response to your feelings, impacts the number on the scale, direct impact on the number on the scale. And then finally, what you can start doing today, today, immediately after we get off this, after you get out of this class, immediately what you can do today to start moving you in the right direction. Okay. So those are, those are what we're going to cover today. Um, so again, paper and pencil and be ready to, to take some notes because I definitely want people to get as much out of this as they possibly can. So my first question for all of you is, I just wanna kinda of get a feel for where people are on their journey. So there are three categories, I, what three categories that I'm gonna ask about. The first, and I want you to self-select and put yourself in the category that you think you fall into. So there are three, A, and now all you have to do is put your comment, and it has to be an A, a B, or a C. So A is you need to lose weight and you don't know what to do. You need to lose weight, you're frustrated, you're, you're fed up, you don't know what to do, that's A. B is you're in the process of losing weight, but it's not moving at the pace that you want it to. You're losing weight, you're kind of going back and forth, but you, it's not moving in the way that you want. You, you think you've got something dialed in, but it's just not going, it's not moving at the, at the pace that you want, you want it to be a little bit more consistent. And thirdly, you are a person who has lost weight, but you are absolutely fearful and terrified that you're going to be able to keep it off. Okay. So a is you need to lose weight now, but you don't know what you're going to do. B is you're losing weight, but it's not moving at the rate that you want. And C you've lost weight. You are really afraid that you're going to gain it back. Okay. So a B or C, please put that in, um, in the comments. And that will give me kind of an idea about where people are. Oh gosh, we got all sorts of, oh, we got lots of bees happening. That is like exciting. Oh, very exciting. Lots and lots of bees. Lots of bees. Uh, awesome. Good, good, good. We got A's and C's. We got B's. We got A's. We got people all over the map. That is awesome. So again, if you're watching, please put in A, B, or C. That's going to give me a really good idea to know kind of kind of where you are and, and where, where people are and what they're needing. So that's amazing. So yeah, if you come on, and again, please, if you're watching this in replay, which again, probably about two thirds of the people are gonna be watching it in replay who have signed up, absolutely 
please go ahead, put your, um, put, you know, put replay and just go ahead and answer. So go ahead and answer all your stuff. And that's, that's perfect. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. George, I am so happy you are here. It warms my heart. It's great to see you. I haven't seen you in forever. It's been, I think, I think it's pre pandemic It is for sure pre pandemic. It might even be longer than that. So buddy, I'm so glad you're here. Um, okay. So perfect. So let's get back to it. So again, want to just get a clear idea of where people are. So, um, the first part, so part number one, so I'm going to ask you to just write part one. Part one is how your brain works and how your brain works in relationship to weight loss. So question for all of you, how many of you, and it could be a Monday morning, it could be any morning, but usually it's a Monday morning. You start your day off, you wake up and you're like, today's the day I am going to, like, I am going to stick to my plan. I get, I am going to eat exactly what I need to eat. You have the best of intentions and it gets to be about three or four o'clock in the afternoon and you find yourself either stopping at the store, stopping at the convenience store, you go to get gas and suddenly you find yourself in the convenience store by, you know, by no fault of your own. Um, or you find yourself in the pantry and you're looking for a snack because your kids are arguing. You had words with your spouse. Your boss said something to you that just really made you angry. So for anyone who has felt this way, we all probably have been there at one time or another. We've all had the best of intentions, but most of the time, your brain and your thoughts, you have those great intentions, but by that afternoon, all of a sudden your brain and your thoughts, they're, they're leading you astray and they can result in you doing things that you don't really want to do, that you didn't intend on doing. You had the best of intentions in the morning. What happened between the morning and, and those words that were exchanged or three or four o'clock in the afternoon? I hate to tell you all, but if that's happened to you, that means your brain is working correctly. Okay, because I am going to put out there to you that your brain oftentimes is not really working in alignment with what you with what your goals are and with what you want to have in your life. I want you almost to think about your brain as like a third person as almost removed from your body. It's not removed from your body, but you know what I mean? It's almost like this other entity and I want to. I want to make sure everybody understands how your brain works because I think for many of you, it will kind of be that aha moment where you're like, oh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a failure. It's my brain is just not working with me. And it, because I don't want anyone to ever, we, we beat ourselves up over so many things and we need to start being kinder to ourselves. And we will be talking about that. But when it comes to your brain, your brain oftentimes is not in alignment and on the same page with you. And that's just, and, and we can get you there and don't worry partner part three, day three on Thursday, we're going to be talking about bringing that all together, but your brain oftentimes doesn't work in alignment with what it actually you want. So I want to explain what that actually means, what that looks like. So when we, we're going to start off talking about the brain. So I'm going to kind of turn into Bill Nye, the science guy, and we're going to get nerdy about our brain and how our brain works. So the two parts of our brain that we're going to talk about is our primal brain and our prefrontal cortex. Those are the two parts of our brain that we're gonna that we're gonna talk about. We have three parts of our brain, but we're gonna talk about those two. So the first one, the primal brain, is just that. The primal brain is our oldest from an evolutionary standpoint. It is the oldest part of our brain. It's the one we have when we're just a little itty bitty baby. And that part of our brain, like when we're children, is into and is focused on instant gratification, it wants to make you happy. It wants you happy all the time. And it also is responsible for the flight or fight response. So it keeps you alive. So it's not a bad thing. It's just, it. I kind of equate it to that part of your brain is like a child or a sassy teenager. You know, like they just want what they want. They ju it just, it wants what it wants. It wants to be happy. It wants it right now. And it doesn't care what the long-term plan is. Okay. Second part of our brain we're going to talk about is the prefrontal cortex and the prefrontal cortex. I equate that with like the prim and proper college professor who knows exactly what you're supposed to do. And you're supposed to have this very, everything's supposed to be methodical and planned out. 
And that's a great part of your brain. That's a great part of your brain because what that, that part of your brain is responsible for is long-term planning and it sees the big picture and it knows what's best for you in the long run. So can you see how these two parts of our brain are so incredibly opposite? They are absolutely in battle with each other, which kind of causes them to balance each other out. But unfortunately, the way we work, it doesn't necessarily balance out. And I'll explain that to you. Um, because the primal brain has been around so much longer and it is our most, it, it's responsible for survival and it gets, does all those fun things like instant gratification and, um, and, and, you know, and, and, and making us happy. That's where we want to be all the time. So that part of our brain is responsible for our choices about 90% of the time. 90% of the time we use our primal brain to make choices for us. Can you see why 90% of the time that person who woke up with those great intentions by three or four o'clock because they had some, some disagreement or something went sideways, why they chose to go and get something from the pantry or get something from the convenience store or get something at the gas station? Because that's where your brain wants to go. Your brain wants you. It wants to make you happy. So it's going to be, it's going to be the one that makes that decision 90% of the time. And it's going to frustrate you because you're like, I don't understand why I'm doing this. Well, you're doing this because that's how your brain has over time developed. And that's what it is. That's, that's kind of, it's doing its job, but it's not going to serve you if you're trying to lose weight. Okay. It's doing its job. Congratulations. You're human, but it's not going to help you lose weight. Okay. So that ratio of nine to 10, 90 to 10, yeah, it's not good, especially when this one, when the, when the 10, we need that 10 to come up much, much, much higher. And I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. We will be talking about that for sure in day number three, how we balance that out, how we get those ratios, those percentages to be a little bit more in balance. Um, but the important thing to know is that you 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 can stop being baffled as to why this happens because now you recognize like oh okay it's the way my it's the way my brain works it's it is it is doing what it's supposed to be doing but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's that's how we want this to go so again i always have to remember it wants you happy it wants you to survive and that's why it's having you do these things that are sometimes not in your best interest and it but it but the fact is that when you do go to the convenience store or you do eat something, it does make you happy for a very, very short period of time. And then the guilt sets in and then you pick the bat up and you start beating yourself up. And unfortunately what happens when that happens is you then feel bad. So what makes you feel better? To eat something. So it becomes this vicious cycle, this vicious cycle that you get in that you have a very difficult time stopping because you don't recognize that, oh, this is my brain and it's just, it's just, it's working the way it's supposed to be, but I need to stop that. So another important fact that I think is really, really important to know is we are not ever striving with our brain to always be happy all the time. Life is not supposed to be rainbows and unicorns. Sorry, it's not supposed to be. It is always going to be a 50-50 proposition. You're going to have 50% positive emotions and 50% negative emotions. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But that is the human experience. And we have to we have to accept that. Your brain doesn't want to go along with that. Your brain wants you to be happy all the time. And that's why it continues to have you do these things that make you happy in the absolute moment. Because it can sense when you're not happy. It wants you happy in the exact moment. But then that goes away, then you feel bad, then you circle back to make yourself feel better again. So we have to kind of almost be resp almost be more of the adult and tell our primal brain, you know what, that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work, we gotta stop this. So for now, for you to get better control of your, um, oh, sorry, 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 how does your primal brain impact what you eat? How does it, how does the primal brain impact what you eat? Well, because again, its job is to keep you happy. It again can sense when you're not happy, whether you are hungry or not. Okay. Whether you're hungry or not, your brain knows when you're not happy. It senses your stress, especially when it's a stress response. 
It doesn't matter if you're hungry or not. It knows you and it knows you well enough what is going to make you happy. For some people, what's going to make them happy when they're unhappy is a glass of wine. For some people, it's getting on and watching porn. For somebody else, it might be shopping. For somebody else, it might be doing drugs. For me, none of those things were appealing. But you let me eat something and I am going to feel a heck of a lot better. So it's important, again, to recognize that your brain is doing these things. And again, it's just trying to make you happy, but it is absolutely sabotaging your desire to lose weight, your desire to get to the weight that you want to be at. Um, so for now, what can you, how can you get better control of your brain and of the thoughts that it is giving you, the thoughts that it's throwing out. Um, just merely by you being more aware and you being here and you taking notes and you're like recognizing like, oh my gosh, those paying attention to the thoughts that are going through your head for some people is mind boggling. It's like, it completely, because they didn't even know. They didn't even know that they even had thoughts or that they could even look and study and think about their thoughts. So the first thing, what you're doing is by being here and learning this information, you are taking the first step of just even the recognition of, oh, I have thoughts. What is my brain telling me to do? Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Do I really want to do that? We're going to talk a little bit more about that a little bit later. But it's that recognition, the first thing, and again, I would say the first thing, the first step that you're taking to, to kind of eliminate this, this, the, these, these out of control thoughts and these thoughts that are causing you to eat when you're not really hungry and when you really don't want to, you're just by recognizing your thoughts, you're already getting some control of your brain. You're recognizing like, oh, why am I in the kitchen right now? Oh, what am I thinking? <gasps> it's my brain again. I don't really need to eat something. I can, I can go. I need, to, I need to step away from whatever it is that I'm about to eat. So we want to make sure, one, that we're not beating ourselves up, that we recognize, okay, I'm taking the first step. I'm here. I'm, 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 I now understand how my brain works. I've got these two parts of my brain. One is just all about good, not good, but, you know, happiness and making me feel good. And the other one has my best interest. And we got to get those a little, little bit more even. But just acknowledging and recognizing that your that your brain may be telling you things that you don't really need to listen to that's a huge first step so right now to take a little break um, if anybody ha if you have any questions or any comments or anything I'm gonna flip back over so I can see you all um, if you have any questions about this about the brain um, oh Jennifer I'm so glad the explanation this explanation is awesome I'm so glad I'm so glad um, Yes, tired brain, totally drained brain, absolutely. All of those things kind of kind of come together. So, um, so yes, yeah, so let me. I'm just going to scroll through the questions. If anybody has a question, if you have any questions about, um, yes, at Tina, your brain's totally working normally, 100%. And that's really what I want everybody to understand is is that your brain is doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. But that doesn't mean you need to follow along with it. That doesn't mean you need to go along with it. And we're going to talk about that. Okay, we're going to talk about what that means. Um, all right. Good, 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 good. So if anybody has, again, any questions, please drop them. Um, oh, here we go. So we are all the same, which I think is helpful because I always feel alone in my willpower if that makes Yes. And and truthfully, I'm going to tell you, Lindsay, thank you for saying that. I'm going to tell you that, that willpower it, it doesn't work. And willpower is not what what I preach in a sense of of it isn't isn't it isn't about because willpower is about resisting and fighting, and and pushing away, and that's the exact opposite of what we want to do. We want to actually, and we're going to talk about that next about feelings and about these thoughts and these feelings that we're getting from our brain and what do we actually do with them. So that's kind of our next step. So Lindsay, great, that was perfect. You led me right into our next thing. Um, Let's see. So I'm gonna say, so Dina, when it when it comes to um, when you just compulsively grab food, um, I am gonna I am gonna say that in general, all of us need to be present. We need to be present in our lives, meaning that 
we and so that's when that's that's when you having this information now you know now there isn't the uh, there there are automatic patterns but that is what differentiates us from my adorable dog Jackson is that we have that higher level of thinking we have the ability to be able to to decide you know what no no wait hold a second I'm not I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna do that so I I actually am gonna ask you to really reconsider even thinking that that compulsiveness that 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 is even a thing for you because when you tell yourself that then it's almost as if you're giving yourself permission to do it. So I would really want you to just say, no, you know what? This isn't that. That's that. that I don't. I don't do that anymore. Because your brain is kind of feeding you that. Oh no, this is something out of your control. No, it, it's definitely it, it is definitely something that you can empower yourself with to say, you know what? No, that I don't do that anymore. That's not what I do. Okay, because I I you've been you've been around a long time, and I know I know you are. I know you are strong, but it, it, it needs to be that you need to give yourself that, that, that power of, I don't do that anymore. That's not what I do. I'm conscious. I'm aware. I am very present in my life. I'm present with what I eat and I'm present with the choices that I make. Um, okay. Uh, okay. I just want to, yeah, willpower is hard. That's why it doesn't work. <laughs> Willpower is hard, absolutely, and that's why, again, it doesn't work. Um, Denise Farrell, good to see you. I'm glad you were able to come in. That's awesome. Okay, so moving on, we're back. Do part number two, and we're going to address two and three together. There's two and three, those two parts together. So for part number two, it's going to be thoughts and feelings, and then the T-zone, okay? So, that's a, so I want you to write thoughts and feelings, the T-zone. All right. So the single most impactful thing that anyone can learn about themselves as a human being is the fact that everything that happens outside of you, that doesn't happen, everything that happens outside of you, and that's everything, every circumstance, every scenario, every situation is totally neutral and carries absolutely no value. That is until you give it value, okay? So until you give it value, everything that happens is just, it's just, it, it's, it's totally neutral. It doesn't mean anything until you give it value. So think about this. How many times have you ha you been watching the news or you, and the news is probably the most appropriate way. You're watching the news and you hear about a car being stolen. And you think, oh man, that really sucks to be you. And then you move on with your life. You're like, eh, God, that would really suck. Eh, okay, back to what I'm doing. Completely, you have no feelings about it. It means little or nothing to you. And it's totally neutral. But when the car that gets stolen is yours, then your thoughts about a car being stolen completely take on a different meaning because it's happening to you. It's something that has value. You have given it value. But when it's somebody else, I mean, how many times do we hear the news, we watch the news, and we hear about someone being killed, and you're like, oh, that's a shame. Back to my life. You know, you just, and, and it doesn't mean anything. And I don't mean that in, a, in, in, a, in an uncaring way, but it's like, oh, yeah, that's too bad. And then you just go on. It, when it happens to you, Absolutely. Then it has huge, huge implications. But nothing, actions, events, situations, and circumstances outside of us do not make us feel a certain way. So those actions, they don't make us feel anything. The reason why we feel something is because of the thoughts that we create about that situation the thoughts that we create about that situation. So it's completely, it, until we attribute value and we can attribute some sort of importance to it, it is totally neutral. So our thought, this is, and what I really want to get across to you is our thoughts are incredibly powerful and our feelings are totally our responsibility. 
and our responsibility alone. Now I will tell you that in my life as a coach, I have told people that many times that, that their thoughts are what is causing them to feel very bad. And I have had people get very upset with me about that. No, it's what someone did to me. And I say, you know what? I understand that you're upset about that. But the cool part is that all of the, all of the upset and the anguish and all of the things that you're dealing with that you don't like, the person who gets to change them is you. You are totally in control. So I say to all of you listening, if you feel like things outside of you are impacting how you're, how you're acting or how you're feeling, it is your responsibility, but you get to be the one who changes it. You get to be the one from this point forward to recognize, oh wait, someone didn't do something to me. I just gave them power to, to make me feel bad and I'm not doing that anymore. That's the cool part. You get to decide how you want that to go. So here is the kind of the, the scenario. Thoughts. Oh, we're getting to that. Sorry about that. I jumped ahead. <laughs> All right. So how do your thoughts and your feelings and this whole thing of what's going on outside of you, how does that, how would that possibly impact your weight? So imagine this, this is the scenario. You've just finished preparing. You spent three, four, five hours preparing this presentation for your boss. You feel like it is the best work you've ever done. Like had never been more on fire. You are on point. You couldn't be proud of your accomplishment. You go in, you walk in, you do your presentation for your boss. Your boss sits there and you do it and you're like, you're just, you're just like, oh my God, I'm killing it. This is awesome. You expect, you, you, you're you finishing, you're expecting like a raise. You're expecting like a promotion, corner office. You're like, he is going to be on his knees begging me to stay and take over the company. And you finish your presentation and he says, good job, thanks, and walks out. You hold it together for a while, but you are furious. You are furious that your boss was so insensitive, that he was rude, he didn't give you the accolades that you deserved, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't even say anything, he didn't give you any feedback, nothing. You did such a great job and then all of a sudden you start to question, did I actually do a good job? Oh my God, maybe, maybe, maybe I suck, maybe I was terrible, oh my God, I, I, I don't know. You, it, it, and so you're just doing all these thoughts, all these emotions, all these things are going through your head. So you decide, you know what, I'm out of here. I'm out of here, this is ridiculous. So you leave the office, there's a gas station nearby, you walk over, you get yourself a cookie, a candy bar, and you start checking LinkedIn. You're like, oh, I'm done, I'm out, I'm out, can't do it. So you come back, you come back to your office, you, you work through it, somebody has some M&Ms on their desk, you walk by, you're like, you know what, my presentation was great, as you're cramming the M&Ms into your mouth. Then you go home, you tell your spouse, you will not believe what happened today. And you relive the whole thing again, bring up all the emotions. And then four pieces of pizza later, two cocktails and an ice cream bar, you are on the couch, miserable, feeling totally, totally dejected because of your job. But now you've compounded that with feeling completely bloated and stuffed and feeling awful excuse the noise, my dog is playing with, with a ball. A ball. <laughs> um, and you're cursing at your boss at what a jerk he is, but all the while you know, oh man, I shouldn't have done that. How many times does that happen? You can replace that same scenario with anything. Your spouse forgets to do something that you ask them to do. You get a flat tire. You don't get a job that you wanted. Circumstances outside of you are totally neutral until you give them importance and power in your life. So I want to introduce the T-zone. So the T-zone is not like the T-zone here. I <laughs> know that's what I always think of. I always think the T-zone. But this is the T-E-A zone. T-E-A. T as in spelling like T. T-E-A zone. And the T stands for thoughts. The E, thought, sorry. The T stands for thought. The E stands for emotion and the A stands for action. Nothing happens without a thought. You have a thought, it causes an emotion, 
the emotion and any emotion always drives any action that you take. So our friend with her presentation, her thought was, my boss doesn't appreciate me. Uh, I'm, I'm totally undervalued. This is all, and all those are thoughts. There's no fact, all thoughts, all thoughts that she made up. The presentation, she was told she did a good job, but it wasn't what she was expecting. She gave value to just the good job and thank you. That wasn't enough. So the thoughts came and they just started to spiral. So those thoughts came and those thoughts came and they made her feel terrible. So when she felt terrible, what did she do? She stormed around the office. She went and she got her candy and her cookie from the gas station. She popped on LinkedIn. She went to her friend, told her friend about it, cramming M&Ms into her mouth. All those driven by those, those, that feeling of feeling undervalued. Did her boss say that she wasn't good? There were no words that her boss said that would ever indicate that she was not doing a great job. But her thoughts got ahead of her. Her thoughts made her spiral. And then all of a sudden, she's a cookie and a candy bar in and M&Ms, then gets home, relives the whole thing again, and a half a pizza and a couple of cocktails and an ice cream later. And she's still in the same situation. Nothing's changed. Nothing has happened except she feels terrible. She's angry still and she feels terrible. That's how thoughts and attributing thought, how, how our thoughts, when they are, when they go in the wrong direction, when they go to the wrong place, that's how our thoughts end up spiraling into impacting our weight. So how you choose to think about anything, that goes on in your life is what starts that waterfall of thoughts to feelings to actions. One thing that I always say a lot in the group is when you don't feel good about yourself, you don't make good decisions. So that is something that I always like to address and I like to make sure that when it comes to thoughts, you always have to remember what are you thinking about yourself? If you aren't feeling good about yourself, those thoughts or those doubts about your value are going to come back. So what do you truly think about yourself? What are the things that you say to yourself inside your own head and nobody's listening? And how often do you punish yourself for things either that you've done or that you haven't done? How much of that negative self-talk is going on all the time? I can probably guarantee that our friend in the presentation probably had already been beating herself up. There were probably already some negative thoughts going in. So when her boss didn't affirm her, her thoughts just cascaded and just went and that waterfall came and came and went. So what really needs to be recognized is that, is that in every moment of every day, you get to decide how you want to feel based upon what thoughts you want to have in your head. But I want to make absolutely one thing very, very clear. This is not about thinking positively all the time. 100% no. This is not about, I'm just going to think happy thoughts. And when a bad thought comes in or when a negative thought comes in, I'm just going to like, I'm just going to change it. I'm just going to change the thought and make it happy. That is not living realistically. It's, it's, and, it, and it will never work because our lives, as I said, are meant to be 50-50. They're meant to be 50% positive, 50% negative. And if we keep thinking we want to only be happy, what we're really doing is we're distracting ourselves from our feelings. We're ignoring our feelings. We're pushing them away. And when we don't deal with our feelings, that pushing away and that distracting needs to be done by something else. And that something else for most of us, for all of us here on this call is eating. That's what we do when we don't like a feeling that's there and we think, oh, think good thoughts, think good thoughts. And then the feeling's still there. It's like, Paul, that didn't work. I should probably eat something. And that's what we need to get away from. We need to make sure that we are not trying to change our thoughts and change our thoughts so we feel better. So we ignore those negative thoughts. Negative thoughts are going to be a part of life. They are absolutely 100% a part of life. And the more and the sooner you can embrace that and realize that that is how it is, but also learn how, how do you process a feeling that's negative? How do you let a feeling that's negative be there? We don't want to distract. 
We don't want to resist. We want to allow thoughts to be there. And that is essentially, that is essentially kind of in a nutshell what I do. That's what I teach people to do is how do you recognize, how do you allow yourself to be able to, to be okay with those negative feelings? Because negative feelings are a part of life. They are absolutely a part of life. And the sooner people realize that we don't have to change our thoughts, we don't have to try and push them away so we don't have to deal with them, we need to embrace them. We need to be okay with that. Um, so the less frequently you find yourself, the, the more you're able to embrace and recognize, okay, my thoughts lead to my feelings, lead to my actions. If I'm having a bad thought, then I'm probably going to have a bad feeling. We can tell ourselves when a thought comes in, we can tell ourselves, in which I teach very, very adamantly, when thoughts come in like, you need that brownie to make you feel better. No, no, I don't need that brownie. That's the thought. You can absolutely say no to a thought. But when feelings are present, we need to allow them to be there. We need to be okay with them being there because no one's going to die from a feeling. We need to be okay with our feelings and be present enough and not try to distract by using food as a way to distract ourselves. We're happy for a very short period of time and then that goes away. All right, questions. Questions about the thoughts and the feelings. I know this is, uh... oh, Tracy, I just I just turned to yours and it says, girl, this is so me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let others have control of my feelings, 100%. No, and, and I will say, Tracy, and to everybody else, that is how I lived my entire, life my entire life has been you know for the for the first you know 40 some odd years of my life that was that was how I lived it was just like whatever anybody else was feeling people could say anything and I would be devastated or I'd be super elated and everything was determined by what somebody else how somebody else valued me and that's what we're going to talk about next is how do we get away from that um okay what strategies should be used to change thoughts to neutral. Um, Patricia, I'm just going to say the strategy is, is to recognize that the thoughts, again, you're not changing the thoughts to neutral. You're just rec. And here's one thing. I don't, I don't want you all to control your thoughts, but what I do want you to ask yourself is ask yourself something when you feel a certain way, or like when, and I always, I think that the most common times I feel, I find this is when I'm having a conversation with somebody and usually it's somebody that I care about tremendously. And so when I'm having that conversation with someone who's very close to me, who definitely knows me well enough that, and at times knows my triggers, um, that when, when conversations are said, I, in that moment get to decide, do I want to take this personally? Do I want to take this and have it mean something about me? Or do I want to be like, that's their opinion. That's one thing. I think that's a super important thing is that all of us, every person who's watching this, as well as everyone out there, gets to decide what thoughts they want to have. Thoughts are always optional. Someone can say anything they want about you and you do not have to accept it. You do not. And it doesn't mean you have to get in a fight with them and go, oh, that's so not true. They can say whatever they want. They get to have their, their opinion about you. Probably the most important phrase that I learned and, and my, my girls who are in my membership and, and anybody, you know, anybody who works with me knows this is like one of my favorite sayings and it is anyone else's opinion of you is none of your business. People can absolutely think whatever they want about you, whatever they want, and you do not have to believe it. All thoughts are optional. You do not have to believe what someone says about you. They can say any, anything they want. You're being so selfish. That's great. Your opinion, not the way I feel. We all have to start having our own backs and start believing in the good people that we all are. Just by, just by virtue of being here on earth, we are all beautiful, amazing human beings. We let other people tell us otherwise. We don't have to believe that. We don't have to go along with that at all. Okay, so that is um, that is absolutely absolutely one of the things. Oh, I see. Eva said something. Uh, one of the one of the key things 
you have taught me is to talk to myself in the third person till these moments pass. Absolutely. And the third person, and <laughs> it sounds kind of strange. That's actually something I did. I did a, I did a, a podcast on that about how you should always refer to yourself in the third person because it's almost as if it, it kind of detaches you from the situation and it's almost, it's almost like the voice of reason, that omnipresent, that third, that, that narrator comes in and that's when the narrator needs to say, oh, stop, no, we gotta be nicer to ourselves, don't do that. Because we oftentimes respond better to the voices of others, but we always have to have that third person voice be the positive voice that comes in and says, no, we're not doing anything, we're not doing that. Um, that's awesome. I saw another question. Hold on. It was, oh, so I don't have to be, no, Billy, you do not have to be Susie Sunshine anymore. No. In fact, Susie Sunshine is probably pretty boring. So let's not do that. <laughs> Billy, you're here. You're, you're, you're much more fun than that. Oh, um, all right. All right. Becky, I'm so glad to see you. I know you've had a lot of stuff going on at home and I'm so glad. I know that, uh, I know your girl went back, and that's that's uh, that was those pictures were beautiful. I was really I was really following along with that story, so uh, I'm really glad you're here. Um, all right, do, 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 do. okay. So let's get back. We are third, our third sec, third, <laughs> our third section, our third section. There it is. Um, our third section is gonna all be about what can you start doing today. Like today, after this call, to put yourself in a better position to manage your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. Okay? So what are they? What are the some things? So let's get down and dirty. So first one, as I said earlier, merely by virtue of you being here and you having the, the, the recognition that these thoughts, one, are optional, you don't have to go along with them. And that your brain sometimes is not your best friend. It's not necessarily telling you exactly what you need to be hearing. So you just need to start paying attention. Just start paying attention to the thoughts that you have. And pay attention, but pay attention from a non-judgmental and very just open, like an, like an observer. Just an observing like, oh, gosh, that thought I just had was really not very nice. I don't think I want to do that anymore. And again, talking in that third person, I don't think that's really not going to, that's not going to do me any good. It doesn't do us any good. That's one of the things sometimes people will, will be like, oh my gosh, I was just appalled at how I talked to myself. I was just, oh my God, I told myself how terrible I was. Okay, we're just doing the same thing. We got to stop that. So just accept and be okay with that. Those are the thoughts that you're having. Those are the thoughts. That's where you are right now. And, and you get to make the choice from there. You get to move from there and make a different choice of how you want to start talking to yourself. So just that observation is super important. Again, thoughts are always optional. Um, and you do not have to believe anything that your brain tells you. So my favorite Peloton instructor, Jess Sims, she's amazing. Love her. Uh, she used to be a former teacher. Um, she always says that your first thought the first thought that you have when something is said, the first thought is always your brain's. The second thought is yours. And you get to decide if you want to go along with the first thought or do you want to go and, and create the second thought that is actually going to be a better thought for you. So you get to decide. You get to decide if you want to believe that first thought or not. So it's one of my favorite stories. And I don't, I don't know if I saw her on the call. She might be having to watch it afterwards. But one of my clients, Julie, I love this so much. She, she said when we first started working together, it was probably maybe a month into her working, us working together. She said, I always thought that when my brain told me I was to have a taco, that that was what I was supposed to do. There was never any question. Like I never even gave it a second thought and it didn't matter if I had just eaten something. It didn't matter if, 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 you know, it, it didn't matter where I was. If, if my brain told me to do something, I would do it. And so when, they don't, my brain told me to eat tacos. I eat tacos. She doesn't, her brain doesn't, her brain might suggest tacos now, but if she's written it on her meal plan, she can eat her tacos. But she recognized that she didn't have to do that. She doesn't have to do that. You do not have to listen to your brain when it tells you to eat something. You can counter that. You can stop it and say, oh no, 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 no. We don't need that. Dinner's in an hour. I don't need that. No, that's ridiculous. And move on your way. You can push those thoughts. You can tell those thoughts. They are not welcome here. We don't do that anymore. So a great question to ask yourself. 
in any situation. And this applies, I wanna make sure everybody knows what I'm teaching today, yes, it applies to weight loss, it applies to every aspect of your life, every aspect of your life, because I am a believer that weight and carrying weight and having issues with your weight is a symptom of other things that are going on. So this is, this is not, and I'm sure, you know, all of you have, have recognized that, that weight impacts various aspects of our lives, all other aspects. Hold on a second. I'm talking right now. You need to be quiet. I have a husky and he likes to whine. Um, they're very vocal. He's being actually quiet right now. Um, but the question is, does this thought that I'm having serve my life in a positive way? Does it serve me? Does it make my life better? And if it doesn't, I don't need to be thinking it. I just don't. I don't need to be thinking that thought. Second thing, do not be afraid of feelings. Do not be afraid of feelings. Feelings will not kill you, ever. They won't. Your feelings are merely vibrations in your body. We have to start getting comfortable with allowing feelings to be there. And that is especially true of those negative feelings that come in. We have to recognize, okay, am I causing my negative feelings by the thoughts that I'm having? Or, and, and before I go to change my thought, maybe I just need to feel this for a minute. Maybe I just need to let this feeling be there. And then I can recognize, mm, it's really not working for me. I think I'm going to change my thought. But we need to not try and push feelings away. We need to not try and ignore them. Because anything that's ignored gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So we need to make sure that we are acknowledging feelings, we are allowing feelings, we are actually leaning into feelings. We're not trying to push them away. We're not trying to deny them. We're not trying to distract ourselves. We want to make sure that we are acknowledging that we're feeling a certain way. And whatever that looks like for you, whether it's, you know, whether it's crying, whether it's journaling, whether it's telling somebody, I am really, really angry, but it's not going to the pantry. It's not going to the store and grabbing a bag of chips. I am all for having chips and I am all for having ice cream, but not to get rid of feelings. That is not, that's not when that is appropriate. It's not appropriate to do that. My, my, my clients know, and I think every, hopefully everybody in this group knows, I am all about, and we'll talk more about this tomorrow, but I am all about all the good things in life when, when it comes to eating, but doing it in a way that is not at the expense of me pushing my feelings away or me ignoring my feelings or me not wanting to deal with feelings. Um, third thing, your self-talk. If your self-talk is less than stellar, which let's be honest, most of ours probably isn't that good, um, you need to start by laying a foundation that is solid, that is a foundation that cannot be broken. And that means you need to be coming from a place where you are establishing the foundation of belief in yourself, no matter what, no matter what. That belief has to be there. You ha we have to start building that foundation. So for me and for my recommendation, what I always recommend, again, daily gratitude, affirmations, positive statements about yourself, and I know for a lot of people, that's way too touchy-feely and way too woo-woo, but I'm going to tell you that it works and that, that most, I, I'm, gonna, I'm, not, I'm never going to make an absolute statement, but most of the time, self-sabotage comes from a lack of belief, a lack of worthiness, and a lack of esteem and belief in yourself. And the only way that's ever going to get better is if you do it yourself. It does. It cannot come from somebody else. It cannot come from the outside. You have to love who you are as you are right now as you're listening to my words. You have to love and care about yourself. Not five pounds from now. Not 50 pounds from now. Right now. Because you're never going to get there if you're coming from a place of hate and disgust and shame it has to come from love or it's never ever gonna work so starting off with that foundation and what does that look like that looks like for me it's five things I'm grateful for every single morning affirmations of belief in myself how do I feel about myself what do I love about myself three things I love about myself and then 
and then, yeah, so five, and then two positive affirmations, three things I love about myself. So five gratitude, three things I love about myself, two affirmations, two things that I aspire to be or that I want to be, but I say them in the present tense as if they are happening right now. Now, talk about affirmations. If you are not sure how affirmations work, and a lot of people, I, I, I've definitely seen some affirmations that I know are like, ooh, that, that, those aren't going to work. If you're not sure how to write an affirmation, I think gratitude is pretty clear. Um, but if you're not sure how to write affirmations, because there is definitely a method to writing them that will make them much more effective, and there are strategies that you can use to incorporate them into your day. If you are not sure about how to do affirmations, comment affirmations in the um in the comments and I will send you my doc my document my PDF document all about setting up and creating your own affirmations for yourself um, and that is that's super super powerful really really a great I, I strut it's in every single one of my programs that I do affirmations are a main main part of any program that I that I do and so if you are not sure about affirmations if you're feeling like I'm not really sure if I know how to do them now that she said that because affirmations can include cannot include the word not or no or negatives so if you're not sure how to write them affirmations in the in the comments and I will send that to you okay so please 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 do that so that is ends day one part one of weight loss done right so um if you i want to make sure that you come back tomorrow because tomorrow we are going to be talking about how you take the things that we talked about today and how you apply them to the what i could term as the practical side of weight loss um and that's the what do you eat and how much do you eat and i promise you that the answers of those two questions will blow you away. So you wanna make sure you come back. Now, if this has been helpful, all I ask is that you put the word helpful in the comments. If this has been helpful, if what I taught you today, if the three, the, the, the three basic aspects that I taught you, how the brain works, how thoughts and feelings impact your weight, and then steps that you can take right now to get yourself in the best possible position to be able to manage your feelings, your emotions, that side of weight loss. Because again, this is what no one is talking about. No one is talking about the emotional component, the psychological component, how our brain works. How, I mean, our brain controls everything in our bodies. Why would we ever not think that we need to understand how our brain works in order to control and to be able to, to make the best decisions of what we put in our mouths? It's crazy, it's crazy. Of course we need to know that. So if this has been helpful, please just write helpful in the, in the comments. And I know that I'm, I'm on the right path. I mean, I, I want to make sure that this is of service to you and that you are feeling like you're getting something out of it. So again, thank you so much. I'm going to pop over and see if anybody has any questions. I'm going to come back over here. See if anybody has any questions. Do, 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 do. Oh, Billy, I'm so glad that I made you feel better. That's good. But you know what, Billy? Who needs to make you feel better? You do. <laughs> and you do. I know. You're awesome. All right. Oh, good. Lots of affirmations. I I am ha love sending that out. I'm super glad. I'm super glad this has been helpful. Um, again, I just, I really want to make sure that, that this is, stop it now. Sorry. I was like, my dog's out of control. Um, so again, tomorrow, same time, same place here on my personal profile. Um, if you have any, if you have any questions at all, please, no, there is absolutely, um, Kathy Perez, could you possibly, could I ask a huge favor of you, you my, my right arm, could you possibly put in the comments my direct uh, me, chat, me chat link, my, you know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Um, could you, I, I, I'm thinking you, I'm thinking you have that if you wouldn't mind. Um, oh, thank you, sweetie. Appreciate that. Um, that would be awesome. I would, um, uh, just so then if anybody wants to just direct, just send me a direct message, you absolutely, oh, thanks love. You absolutely can just send me a direct message. If you have a question that you want to just ask me directly, that's awesome. I would, I would love that. Um, so just make sure that, um, yeah, just make sure that you are, um, you, you, I want to make sure that it's totally open door. Any message, any question that you want to ask, please, please, please go ahead. Okay, so tomorrow, same time, 
same station. Uh, and we will uh, we will continue with that. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Oh, you're so awesome. Um, and we will uh, we'll continue tomorrow. Again, the practical side. The practical side we, where we will be combining our thoughts with our uh with our, the practical side and uh, talking about what to eat and how much to eat and all the good things. Yes, Sue Keller, five things of gratitude, three things you love about yourself, two affirmations. Whoop, whoop, that's it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, George, I cannot tell you how honored I am that you're here. Um, you're amazing. So all of you, you all, you all are the best. Thank you so much for coming, and I will see you tomorrow, same time. And, um, and I will be sending out the replay tonight as well. So if you want to just come back and check out on things. Um, oh, bless you, George. Um, yeah, I'll talk to you all soon. Okay, see you tomorrow. Thanks so much.